What's up, everybody? Taylor Twelman from Major League Soccer and Apple TV. Every week in Major League Soccer is a lesson in expect the unexpected. And before I give you Twelman's takes, I actually want to get into the big news of the last 24 hours. Does Miami trading their vice captain, DeAndre Yedlin, to Eastern Conference foe and supported Shield winning FC Cincinnati mean Miami is getting better or worse? Or worse to get better? See, all winter long, Miami were rumored to be trying to make moves to complement their new stars. But that's led to Miller, Martinez, Gregory, Arroyo, and now DeAndre Yedlin being shipped out of South Florida. All starters. Now, from FC Cincinnati's point of view, they're in a win-now mode. They went out and signed Miles Robinson, the best free agent on the market. They now acquire his national team teammate, DeAndre Yedlin. It's another solid move from Chris Albright to give Pat Noonan and his staff a bona fide wingback. But what does this mean for Inter-Miami? Redondo should be there very soon. But now this is a roster without a natural right back, meaning who, what, when, how are all questions for this back line that still need to be answered and addressed in the next few days and weeks. I get it. Julian Gressel can play there, especially if they play three center backs. But they don't have depth at center back, and Tata Martino prefers to play him through the middle. He just had three assists against Orlando. Which begs the question, do they have an ace up their sleeve? Is there another move to be had before the deadline? It's never a dull moment for Messi and friends. Are the Galaxy back? It is crazy to ask that only two games in because we can't let the small sample size cloud the fact that the winningest team in MLS history has missed the playoffs five of the last seven years. But, and it is a big but, they look different, don't they? They're free, they're fluid, their attacking play is in sync. Joseph Paintsill scoring a Galasso to get it going, combination play, spacing, final touches in sync. We haven't even seen Gabriel Peck, who's the most expensive signing in club history. Now, I, I agree with others when they say the Galaxy are back when they're winning trophies. But two games in, don't fool yourself. They're playing the best they have in a long time. Which now begs the question, can they finally get back to where they belong? Top of the Western Conference. Time will tell. But give me more Joseph Paint Seal. Post game saying, quote, if we keep playing like this, we are going to kill a lot of clubs. A lot of clubs. Trust me, I like a spice. What was more surprising? Portland Timbers giving up a two-goal lead late in the second half when Phil Neville went to three in the back. Or... The fact that D.C. United have started the season with four points. Now, when Troy Lesane was hired, many, including myself, felt it was a big old square peg and round hole type of thing with the roster. But I'm not sure I got that right. They lead MLS in expected goals. That's one thing. But doing it in the manner in which they are, that's another. Playing with a purpose. Being direct. It's all helping them achieve play at a higher level than expected. Herrera's been a fantastic signing for them with two assists already. Kudi Pietro plays with a real tempo and pace that frustrates the opposition. They came back and tied the Portland Timbers, even with Benteke as a late scratch. Now, Pirani's got to be a little bit more of a chance creator. Benteke's got to stay healthy. If those two happen, scoring goals is never going to be a problem for DC, which adds even more drama to a ridiculously tough Eastern Conference. And speaking of scoring goals, this week on Offside, Bradley Wright Phillips and I will talk about scoring goals consistently in Major League Soccer. What do you need around you? What is that mentality like? And I'll ask him, does he feel any regret that he never got to play in an MLS Cup? Episodes drop every Wednesday on Apple Podcasts.